Hello, my name is Michael and I'm a Web3 developer. Today I'm going to show you how to build wrap and unwrap Ethereum with a safe Gnosis functionality. So let's start. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the app looks like in general. So this is really simple UI that allows us to wrap and unwrap Ethereum the regular way. And here is the Gnosis way. So before doing that, we need to have a save vault address. I will show you later how to do that. After we have it, then we can also see the the amount that we have there. So, but first I need to connect to my MetaMask. So I'm using Sepolia. All those addresses are burned addresses. So after connecting, I can initialize my save. And that creates us an object that we can interact with our save. So as you see already here, I have some transactions pending here. And we can't execute it because there are so many pendings. We will have to deal with them first. But the way it will work is you will type something here. Zero 01. Then after pressing submit, we're gonna confirm the signature. And this will propose a new transaction, as you see here. So now we have to change the wallets to the second one in order to approve the transaction. And in the end, we can execute the transaction. So it's kind of like the three step process. So first we propose, then we accept, approve, and then we can execute it. And that's pretty much how the entire application will work. It will look slightly better in the save UI. And we will move to that next so I can show you how it looks on their side. Okay, so in order to create our safe wallet, we need to connect our primary MetaMask wallet. So this is support a testnet, I'm gonna call it test. And here we are adding multiple wallets that you have. Basically, every wallet that you're gonna add, you're gonna need the signature of it unless you put the threshold of one. But the idea is that, let's say if you have free users, free wallets, that you want to sign the transactions to approve them, you set the threshold to three or maybe two. Uh, an idea is that there need to be some kind of consensus in order to make it work. But we can just show you with one to move forward and then you can create the wallet here. So I'm gonna move now to my already created wallet with two users, two wallets with the threshold of two. And let me show you how that works. Right now we are in my safe vault and I'm gonna show you how it looks like. So I, I already signed up with my MetaMask wallet. And after creating the vault, I created with two wallets with the threshold of two. That indicates here. Now I'm gonna show you my transactions. So these are rejected, but this one is not. And the way it works, as I mentioned before, is that the first person needs to suggest, propose the transaction, and then the other need, need to approve it. So you get the confirmations. Once you re reach the threshold, then you are able to unlock the execute button. In this case, there is some problem because we have other transactions pending here. That's why it won't execute, but normally you would be able to execute it. So that's how they made this interface, basically. 
there's some history a bunch of stuff and as you see we are calling deposit on the wrap ethereum contract so it's basically we are doing the same thing that we would do in the normal smart contract but it's also wrapped with the safe uh, api their sdk and with that it goes through this vault and not just going directly from our wallet also we don't use our wallet we use the vault address from here so let's move on to the code so now i moved here and i'm still testing where is the best way to put my face on the screen and let's deep dive into the typescript code so we're gonna start with the readme file and I like this readme because it describes all the key features, all the requirements, all the instructions how to run the code on the scripts and also the instruction on how to use the app without watching the video, some screenshots so you have some idea how it looks like, walkthrough links and the demo that you saw at the beginning. So this is basically the readme file and now we're gonna go deeper into the code. Let's deep dive into the hardest part of the code. The hardest part here was making the config because all the versions were differently and they were not collaborating the way I wanted. So for example, some transactions objects uh, type was in the VM library and some of them were still supporting eaters and it's all like meshed up together so just finding out how to combine them that was the problem itself this is my config setup this is my wagmi of this i think adapter just like setting up what chains we're gonna support not sure if this project id should be in dot n file but it's not in fewer so it's it's all right the whole application is in one file so there is no routes so there is a lot of code that could be avoided like this save sdk and then just checking and initializing it making sure it's working because you could put that to routers and that would look better the only thing here is that we're gonna have to fetch the transactions every 10 seconds just because they don't support it yet. And we're gonna go through all the models. So in the header, we just have the button and the connect button from the rainbow kit. Pending transactions. Yeah, after we fetch the transaction, we're gonna pass it here and we're gonna display it based on the is it like a proposer and the confirmation length we're gonna show different buttons here we're just managing the the save because we had the input to initialize the save and then we have the save that is initialized the address so we can remove it if we want to right now we are in the main module that is handling wrapping and wrapping ethereum as you see here the regular wrapping is just calling the address directly the deposit function here and we just pass the value there is no magic here and we also handling here the safe way so i'm gonna go deeper into the code First method is a save with address initialization. So basically initialize the SDK. Now I see here that we could just initialize it inside so we don't have to pass it every time, but that's fine. And let's look, look at the wrap save Ethereum. We're passing kind of the same arguments as we would do in the regular contract right it's really similar but there's there's a difference here 
we need to wrap it in the save transaction data so they have their own way of handling that and once we have the data we're just gonna pass to create and propose transaction because as i mentioned before first we need to propose a transaction and then we're gonna sign it and approve it and then execute it so with the transaction we need to put it to the right format and get transaction transaction hash sign it and then propose it signing means basically it we're gonna say okay this is our stuff and once we have it then we can pass it to the blockchain so now we have a proposed transaction and it should already show on the screen when we fetch the transaction unwrap is exactly the same way we just change some parameters here the only part that changes is the the transaction data so here we have a confirm transaction so after we have a proposal we can confirm it we just need the hash of it it's straightforward and execute is exactly the same just we call it a different method so the hardest part here is the this just coming up with the with the code here uh, just remember to include the nouns because without that it will stack with the same nouns and you have some conflict so remember about that and also remember that uh, if you have some pending transactions then it's hard to push them and push them forward and it will also be stuck so and that's pretty much it i hope you liked the video and that brought you some educational value so this video is totally free i showed you some code certain parts how i made it but if you want to check the code and get it working right away out of the box then uh, the code is available with the link down below with some small fee i hope you guys understand it's not much but it will just give me a lot of like confidence and uh, more help for the future uh, videos because i am planning to build more of the web free tutorials with the stuff that people actually can use in real life and it's useful so let's hope uh, this will continue so yeah the